Schenker is an artist whose landscape work is driven by her focus on the environment. Please welcome Leslie Sobel. So in September, I was uh, artist in residence at Canyons of the Ancients National Monument uh, in Southwest Colorado. This is a program that paired artists and scientists in a wilderness setting and was funded by the Aldo Leopold Wilderness Research Institute and Colorado Art Ranch. Canem is the biggest amalgamation of archaeological sites in the world. There's something like 30,000 sites there. It's uh, Anasazi Pueblo peoples, it's an area that's been inhabited for 10,000 years. These people were there for about 1,000 years. And 1,000 years ago, there were more people there than there are now today. The Anasazi built really sophisticated, multi-story buildings. They farmed with irrigation and reservoirs. And in 1276, they disappeared. We worked with uh, archaeologists, geologists, and biologists going out in the field to understand what they did and to get out into really rugged wilderness that I never, ever would have gotten to by myself. We did a snake and lizard inventory with a bunch of biologists, interrupted this guy's nap. He was not too pleased, <laughs> but uh, that's how they keep track of how rare animals are uh, doing in terms of their population in the parks. We also went out with a group of geologists to do a field trip uh, to learn about the physical structures of the area and ran into torrential rain with flash floods and uh, car eating sticky mud. So it was an environmentally challenging trip. Same trip uh, led to some encounters with bears. You see their tracks there, overlaying our prints. We heard them when we were camping at night and uh, hiked and came back to see the footprints on top of our footprints, which is a little under. I did a lot of drawing and photography while I was there. My main medium in caustic is uh, beeswax-based paint and uh, requires a torch and a heated palette and a lot of heavy materials, so I didn't take that with me. Saw a lot of pictographs uh, on walls. These are made with stone tools chipping into a stone wall, and nobody really knows what they mean. Is that map making, origin stories, uh, communicating? Don't know. Nobody knows. But uh, people have been making art with handprints on rock walls for tens of thousands of years, and uh, it resonated with me enough that I made paintings about that as well once I got back. And, uh, it's an area that is uh, really environmentally uh, challenging. Mesa Verde has burned about 70% of it in the last 100 years from lightning strikes. Hot, hot, dry summers, cold, harsh winters, and now flooding. It's green in areas that were never green before. This is Cliff Palace. It's one of the biggest of the uh, enormous uh, cliff dwellings at Mesa Verde, which required you to climb up or down steep cliffs to get there. They were very defensible. They built, uh, built beautiful pottery in black and white. This is pretty sophisticated stuff. These are not people who were just eking out a living. They had time to think about aesthetics and design in their work. And large parts of the ground there are just littered with stone tools and with shards of pottery thousands and thousands of pieces. You crunch them when you walk in some areas. It's amazing. Although a lot of it has been stolen in subsequent years by people who don't realize. By the 13th century, times were starting to get tough. Uh, they'd cut down all the trees for fuel and for uh, food. They had uh, run through all the large game animals. And uh, when you uh, look at archaeological sites from the 13th century, you find thousands of chipmunk bones instead of deer or rabbit skeletons. People, the bodies of people exhumed from them were all malnourished, and uh, they were just really struggling. There was a strong major drought at that point as well. And then people started to fight over resources because they were starving. So uh, you find that the bodies from that time frame all had their heads bashed in were butchered for cannibalism, really horrendous times. And in 1276, they disappeared. Only they didn't, it turns out. They migrated, they moved to New Mexico, and their descendants are the Hopi, the Zuni, and 19 other living tribes who laugh at our notion that they disappeared and have an oral tradition going back to those times. Colorado in September, you might have noticed, had some really big weather. 
huge floods in the Front Range, and we had our share of flash floods and big storms there too. It made it very difficult to get around. And that was definitely caused by climate change. And uh, the ancestral Puebloans moved when they ran out of resources. So where are we going to go? Looking at Typhoon Haiyan or just tonight's weather, you can see that we've got a real problem on our hands. Thank you.